हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वी बिगिन्स विद द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ गेस्ट्रो इंटेस्टिनल ट्रैक्ट एंड दिस इज द फिफ्थ वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर दिस स्टमक देर सिक्रीशंस इसोफेगस ऑन इट्स लोअर एंड ओपन्स इन साइड दिस स्टमक दिस इज द कार्डियक रीजन ऑफ द स्टमक दिस पार्ट इट इज नोन एज फंडस ऑफ द स्टमक दिस इज बॉडी ऑफ द स्टमक this is the antrum this this part it is known as pylorus and in the pylorus there is a pyloric sphincter this is the angular notch inside the stomach walls there are uh, numerous folds these are known as rugae gastric functions or the functions of this stomach reservoir for control release of digesta into the small intestine mixing of the food mechanical breakdown of the feed or food hydrolytic digestion by acid and enzymes mainly protein digestion it kills the bacteria secret intrinsic factor which is needed for vitamin b12 absorption hormone production carefully controls emptying of contents to the small intestine so all these are the functions of the stomach most important viva question so this is the mucosa of the stomach in the mucosa there are different type of cells surface mucus cells which secrete the mucus mucus snake cell which secretes the mucus this is the parietal cells parietal cell secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor chief cell chief cell secrete pepsinogen and gastric lipase and hormone producing g cell secretes hormone gastrin so this three cell and their secretion is most important parietal cell secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor chief cell secrete pepsinogen and gastric lipase hormone producing g cell secrete hormone gastrin all right stomach secretion it is around 2.5 to 3 liters per day with a ph of 1 to 2 inside the stomach secretion the most important content is the hydrochloric acid or hcl which decreases the ph around 2 to 3 it kills the bacteria it activates the pepsinogen which is a proteolytic enzyme to pepsin helps in iron absorption second mucus there are two different types of mucus secretion insoluble mucus and soluble mucus which protects lining from the acid and enzymes and it forms a barrier so there will be no auto digestion of the gastric mucosa with the help of this proteolytic enzymes and it also act as a lubricant pepsinogen the most important proteolytic enzyme inside the stomach and it is secreted in the inactive form and it is activated to pepsin by hcl hydrolyzes protein to proteases peptones and polypeptides so it is the function of pepsin lipase in some say species intrinsic factor gelatinase lysozymes and electrolytes so all these are the stomach secretions stomach secretions will be asked as a short note so this is the parietal cell and uh, how the hcl secretion what is the mechanism behind the hcl secretion that is what i am going to explain right now two simple molecules co2 and h2o combines to form h2co3 with the enzyme carbonic anhydrase 
this H2CO3 divide into H plus and HCO3 minus. Now this H plus ion goes inside the lumen of this stomach via H plus K plus ATPS pump. This H plus ion goes inside this stomach lumen via H plus K plus ATPS pump. Alright. Okay. Now this HCO3 minus ion coming out with a replace of Cl minus ion via HCO3 minus Cl minus active antiporter transport. This HCO3 minus coming out of the parietal cell with the help of Cl minus antiporter transport and this transporter is known as HCO3 minus Cl minus active antiporter transport. Now this HCO3 minus ion goes inside the blood vessels. So it is responsible for postprandial alkaline tide as well as alkaline urine. So it is the most important viva question. What is postprandial alkaline tide? So due to release of H plus ion inside the lumen of the stomach, every individual H plus ion there is a release of HCO3 minus ion into the blood which is responsible for postprandial alkaline tide all right now whatever the cl minus ion enter in this it will goes inside the lumen via cl minus channels this is the cl minus ion enter into the lumen of the stomach by cl minus channel so here h plus and Cl minus ion combines to form the HCl inside the lumen of the stomach. So this is the mechanism how the HCl formation occurs in the lumen of the stomach and it is the most important. Now we already know what is the mechanism behind synthesis of HCl inside the parietal cells. Now functions of HCl kills ingested bacteria adds protein digestion it activates pepsinogen into pepsin with the act of this HCl pepsinogen is converted to the pepsin but first pepsinogen have to be converted in pepsin by the HCl and later this pepsin also converts further pepsinogen into the pepsin provides the optimum pH for pepsin action which is around 2 to 3 pH stimulates secretion of hormone that promote the flow of bile and pancreatic juice so it is also important function of HCl so all these are the functions of HCl inside the stomach regulation of gastric secretions there are three phases in the regulation of gastric secretion cephalic phase gastric phase and intestinal phase so first we begins with the cephalic phase which is mainly nervous phase in the cephalic phase conditioned reflex and unconditioned reflex conditioned reflex stimulus sight smell thought of the food center brain and different along the vagus now it is going to increase the secretions of the stomach via the vagus now unconditioned reflex stimulus taste of the food center medulla oblongata and different along the vagus now so with the help of condition and unconditioned reflex there will be the release of gastric juice via the efferent runs through the vagus now Now the second one gastric phase stimulus food distending the stomach that means entry or presence of food inside the stomach it distends the stomach and it is a stimulus for the gastric phase of the release of the gastric secretions nervous through vagus now continued gastric secretion and motility of the stomach and hormonal with the help of this gastrin hormone 
produces secretion rich in acid and pepsinogen remember i already told you that g cell of the stomach mucosa secrete gastrin all right third phase intestinal phase of the gastric secretions stimulus food distending the duodenum it's obvious thing that whenever the food enters into the duodenum it initiate the intestinal phase of the gastric secretions nervous it inhibits gastric secretion and motility so inside the intestinal phase it is regulated by different type of nervous system and it, it inhibits gastric secretion and motility and uh, hormonal via the release of secretin and cholecystokinin these are the hormones which are released from the different type of cells of the intestinal mucosa from the duodenum and small intestine and it inhibits gastrin release gastric secretion and motility so here the important thing is that uh, in the syphilic phase it is going to stimulate the gastric secretion gastric phase obviously there is a need of gastric secretion so it is stimulated but in the intestinal phase once the food has been entered into the duodenum which is a first part of small intestine there is no further need of the gastric secretions as well as gastric motility so in the intestinal phase these hormones as well as nerves which going to inhibit the gastric secretion and gastric motility now the gastrin which is a hormone remember hormone is a substance which is secreted by the different type of cell directly into the blood all right that substance are known as hormones so gastrin is a hormone which is released from the g cells of the stomach directly into the blood via the blood it again acts on the stomach how we are going to see it is secreted by g cell of antral glands secreted as progestin converted to gastrin by hcl or and food products functions of the gastrin it stimulates growth of the mucosa it stimulates motility of the stomach small effect on gall bladder contraction so these are the functions of gastrin jolinger ellison syndrome it's a gastrin producing tumor in that condition there will be the high level of gastrin into the blood factors affecting gastric secretion protein digestion products distension of pyloric antrum vagal discharge or gastrin releasing peptide grp and acid in antrum inhibits the gastric secretion so these are the factors which affect the gastric secretion protein digestion products distension of the pyloric antrum vagal discharge or a release of the gastric releasing peptide and acid in the antrum which inhibits the gastric secretions so these are the functions of gastrin which are the functions of gastrin it stimulate the growth of the mucosa it stimulate the stomach motility or gastric motility and small effect on the gall bladder contraction so that is all about the gastrin its function and factors affecting the gastrin secretion so in this figure you are going to see how the stomach secretions are regulated by the nervous as well as hormonal factors so parasympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers which supplies to the stomach parasympathetic postganglionic impulses stimulate the release of gastric juice from the gastric glands these are the parasympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers of the vagus nerve it is going to stimulate the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers and there will be the release of gastric juice from the gastric glands whenever this parasympathetic preganglionic nerve fibers are stimulated or whenever this vagus nerve is stimulated 
now impulses of this vagus nerve stimulation also stimulate the release of gastrin which is a hormone and it is released from the g cell as it is a hormone it is released into the blood stream why the blood stream it again having the act or effect over the gastric mucosa gastrin stimulates gland to release more gastric juice and this gastrin again having the effect over the different type of cells of the stomach and it increase the gastric juice secretion